So, we are... What day is it? I don't even know. Today is Wednesday, the 24th of October. 2018, and we're in a cavernous hall in sunny downtown or uptown Barcelona. And here I am with Mr. Craig Schmeyhill, good old buddy of mine. Howdy, howdy. Howdy, howdy. So, what, you've made a lot of changes with the mentor program. Come on, let's run through this. And All right, so... On. Uh, mentor program. I, I've made a lot of changes, but there was also a lot of changes that took place at the beginning of the year, right before I was involved. Um, some of those changes are, uh, for, for lack of a better phrase, focus, right? So it wasn't really that we removed things from the program. We actually focused the program. So the idea behind the mentors in, is from an SAP perspective is we want the SAP mentors to mentor SAP. We want them to provide guidance and feedback to SAP on strategy and technology. So the only expectation we have of mentors is that they do just that. Anything else the mentors do is above and beyond. And from a program perspective, SAP wants to be respectful of their time, that they're volunteering to us for this. So the only thing that we're going to ask is for them to provide their guidance and feedback. Okay. You may see them active in all these other places. That's great, but that's because they're awesome people. Right. But you've done some. Um, you've made some very important structural changes yes. to that program. So, so let's talk about those. With this idea and this concept of respecting time and, and focus and, and feedback to SAP in mind, what we've done is we've created roughly about twenty. I think there's twenty six work groups now. So all the mentors are divided up into individual work groups. These work groups are self chosen. So it's where the mentors feel they're most passionate about a certain topic. So it could be a strategic topic. For example, um, about the developer and community rate relations in general, or it could be about S4 HANA, or it could be just general SAP strategic topics where they're sitting down with Buren Gurkha. Or could it be more than one topic if, so, if they so wish? The only thing that we're asking is that they participate in one. Yeah. But we do have mentors who are very passionate about multiple topics and they participate in multiple ch um, channels. What we're though reminding them is that, hey guys, remember, you're here at an event you got to make sure you make the time to go see the events as well. So we are cautioning them on not getting too involved in too many different ones, but to focus their own attention and time because really, I mean, you've been walking around the show floor. There's a m massive amount of information here, the massive number of hands-on sessions, lectures, lightning talks, roadmaps, strategy sessions. To be honest with you, I don't want the mentors cooped up in a room. I want them out here exploring everything as well. So what we're trying to do is, yes, at minimum of one, Try not to go beyond that too far. Maybe two, three is okay. Beyond that, though, all you're doing is overloading yourself and you're taking your opportunity away of being at an event like Sapphire or TechEd or, or CX or Success Connect or something like that. You're you're losing the opportunity to network and actually talk to the people one-on-one -on -one as well. Okay. Now, you've also made other structural changes in the sense that you've pulled out certain people from that, right? So in, the so in the past, you had um, multiple people involved in the mentor program, right? You had you had a couple of people in US-based, you had a couple of people European-based, you had a lot of different people involved. Now, one of the things from the mentors were, well, who do I ask about what? And then they ended up bouncing around a little bit. Now, on a small team of four or five people, maybe a couple of interns or a fellow every once in a while, it was okay. It was manageable. However, it was still not efficient. And remember, all of this is about respecting their time. So if they have a question, they have a single point of contact. The program manager for the SAP mentors is Katarina Fisher, right? Single point of contact, they have questions, they can reach out to her. Now, if they want to discuss other things, they're more than welcome to come to me anytime. My door is always open. Um, but if they have a question about the program, about one of the work groups, about something going on, if they're having a difficulty with something, Katarina is there. Kati, as everybody knows her, she's right there for this. Okay. But you've also hived off the uh, SAP employees who were part of the mentor program as well. Can you explain that? So when we looked at the SAP mentors, it, it was a collection of, of employees, of externals, customers, partners, independents, and everything like that. And we, we kept looking at it, and something didn't feel right about the mix. From a communication, from a knowledge exchange, everything was great. But we felt that we were doing the employees a little bit of a disservice because, of course, when it came time to which mentor do we promote on what occasion, yeah. we're, a customer and a partner is going to win out every single time compared to an individual employee. So we wanted to be respectful of the employees and we wanted to give employees an opportunity that maybe they're not getting as much 
inside of a program of so many people. So we created a brand new uh, program called the SAP Technology Ambassadors. It's designed to get those employees who feel compelled to go above and beyond what they're working on and actually present at third party events, engage with the outside audiences. And we've created this new program targeting those employees and we're helping them with upskilling, uh, speaking opportunities, engagement opportunities, and we've invited them to come into those mentor meetings to help facilitate the conversations which they were doing already in the past as well. Okay, but the, but the point is that there is a very clear distinction between the SAP mental community as a community and the SAP ambassadors as enablers and people who are working Absolutely. Or SAP, the company, right? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Two separate programs. <clears throat> they have crossover, but they are still two separate programs. Okay. So one of the criticisms of the mental program was that it kind of felt like a club where you got your mates in, right? Now you're saying we're moving away from that. We're having a different model of bringing new people in. Do you want to so, talk about that? So in the past, um, of the past couple of years, there was a nomination process. There was a council that reviewed the nominations, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, they, they did it in the sense that they wanted to be very transparent about the process. Yep. However, in this open transparency about the process, there was still confusion about how did somebody get nominated to begin with. Um, now, I personally, when I'm, when I'm thinking about the mentors and the idea that I want them to provide feedback to SAP on our technologies and strategies, I'm thinking about somebody that has a specific set of skills, they have a specific type of audience, and they have a specific set of opinions that they want to share. Whether it's good or bad, I don't mind negative. Negative is perfectly fine. Constructive negative is what I, is, is absolutely better. Right. So what we've done is we've now said, instead of doing nominations, where somebody gets nominated for whatever potential reason, and no matter how you look at this, from a, a subconscious, you're always going to be a little bit biased if the person giving the nomination is somebody that you respect. Yeah. Instead, we're recruiting. We're going to keep our eyes out there on the broader ecosystem, whether it's the Aribas, the Hybrises, the success factors. It doesn't matter what part of the SAP ecosystem you're in. If we start to see really interesting things coming out of individual people, we're going to keep our eye on them. And when we feel that they've got to a certain level of where this could be a real great fit to the mentor program, we're going to approach them and invite them to join the program. Right. Now, to be a great fit to the mentor program also means that I have to do my job and I have to make sure there's executives on the SAP side that are not only willing to listen, but take action as well on the feedback that's coming in. I don't want to waste anybody's time and bring somebody in if I don't have executives that they have there to talk to. Well, I mean, you know, in fairness, I mean, at least in my experience over the years, SAP has been prepared to listen. It doesn't always like it. Sure. And that's inevitable, right? Yeah. That's absolutely inevitable. But it has been prepared to listen and even on occasion to do things, which yep. is even better, right? Yep. So, okay, so that's grand. Huge hall, you own a quarter of this space. It's, it's a little bit big, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't envy you when it comes to budget, uh, budget appraisal time, quite frankly. Luckily, I'm not alone in this process. So, ah, right. So, Helena Losada on the team, her and I uh, share a lot of this activity together. And, um, you know, luckily, we keep each other sane in the process because it's big. And we this is now the second time. We did this in Vegas. We're doing it here. And then we'll do it again in Bangalore. Wow. Okay. So, what have been the highlights? What have been the – I mean, I know you got a lot of – completed tutorials going on and I know that that's one of your big metrics and it looks as though you're going to blow it from blow it past last year which is fabulous yep but what are the really cool things that you've seen that you'd say you know what this is this is what this is what being an SAP developer is about and by the way it's not that next little squeak on FICO right no <laughs> so um, to get to give a kind of a little hint um, so if you're inside the developer garage space, which is the area that, we're, that you're mentioning here, um, you'll find SAP runs SAP inside the space. This is the SAP IT organization who are building the tools and the services that we as SAP employees are even using. Better work, then. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they do. And th what these guys are also doing is they're also sharing that with their own experiences with our customers and how customers can also utilize the same tool sets to do things in their own organization as well. Well, last year, they were out there on the show floor. They had a little booth. They were showing some stuff. And I kept looking at them going, you know what? 
I want them in our space. <laughs> right. So basically, yeah, I walk around, I look at the really cool stuff, and I, I, eh, I guess poaching is an okay word to use in this term. But I, I brought them into the space, right? right? I said, I want these guys in here. They're blowing it away. People, the feedback, they're showing a virtual reality demo of the office of the future and how we might use virtual reality to integrate and communicate and collaborate across whatever distance you happen to be in. The guys are excited. They're engaging with the people. They've constantly had somebody throwing on the virtual reality headset. We got them walking around. And these things, to be safe, you got to have enough room. Yeah. So TechEd has been great for this. Um, TechEd is really responsive when they have something that they know the attendees are going to find really interesting. So anytime that we have that, TechEd is right there to help us make that a wonderful experience for the attendees. So. Okay. Um, this year, I've been looking around. The the, uh, the SAP Experience area has a lot of these demos. Uh, the Team Liquid is over there with the eSports. What the hell do they do? So so SAP has started to, to engage in the eSport realm. Oh, yeah, and Team yeah. Liquid is there, yeah. and they show how they use our enterprise analytics to actually improve their team gaming and how to how to analyze that against their, their competitors and everything like that. Money bowl. So, so, <laughs> so we actually have that over there and you can actually see it right, right? you right. can actually see how they're using the technology and everything right. like that so so what i really like is this fact that we're not trying to to just you know and, and this came from the keynote as well we're not trying to just show all the tools in the toolbox we're trying to show how we use it together yeah right so even the developer garage right we you, you said tutorials but these tutorials are in a series yeah and and we show how you build on one after the next after the next so it could be something as simple as logging in enabling this service enabling that service and then we show you how to connect the dots together and for me that means more to a developer than just showing you know 300 lines of code and and how to make that really cool but it shows them how they can go back to their their companies and and really just do something with all that different disconnected tech. You know, it could be this piece over there, that piece over there, but we're, we're really trying to go this, this route of these journeys. I mean, tech has talked about these learning journeys and everything like that. We want people to, to take all the pieces as they go through and see how it all connects together. Okay. So, my pet, my pet topic, listening to Björn yesterday, um, and I understand there was a little controversy around this, was that you know, did that audience of largely Ababas kind of get it or not? Especially the keep the core clean thing. Ah, oh, people make money out of dirty core now. Come on, and, you know, put that aside for a moment. I very much, I very much enjoyed Jan's keynote personally, but I heard that there was all sorts of different views around it. Some people liked it, some people hated it, some people thought it was too technical. I thought, what? <laughs> How much? I, what did I, I, I saw maybe 100 lines of code, that was it, come on! <laughs> yeah, behave yourselves, right? It strikes me that the ABAP community, which is what, 90, 99% of people that are going to be here one way or the other from a development standpoint? I don't know if it's that high anymore, but okay. it's, it's definitely it's, a significant it's, it's number. A yeah, people, it's right? a significant number. I get the impression that this is a this is a community which has, to a large degree, been resistant, not for an, not because it's at fault, but because those guys have been working year in, year out on very specific things that they needed to either develop or maintain, and that's pretty much all they've needed to see. The world has fundamentally changed. It's now exploded in ways that none of us could have anticipated a few sure. years ago. No, absolutely. And, and a, and it's, it seems to me that that represents a, an intellectual and philosophical challenge for people. But I'm also wondering whether that might be changing at this event, even as we speak. Um, it's surprising that you ask, because I've literally had this very similar conversation six times on the show floor today. Well, I mean, and this is the first one with me. I'm yeah. only talking about it all the bloody time. I, oh, it's, 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 you know... Only the mid afternoon, yeah. And I've literally had six individual conversations about this topic, right? From traditional hoppers who are starting to. It's it's almost like you see the 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 shift, the mentality shift, and they realize, yes, everything I did ten years ago in Abab, I can still do, right? It still works. Why change it, right? Huh? But really now, but now they're starting to see the benefits, the additional items that become available when that happens. And I, 
personally believe that the more that I see things like, I mean, even SAP, right? I've had to deal with the, the whole hiring, recruiting thing inside of SAP. Even we have this LinkedIn stuff, right? Where, oh yeah, just upload my LinkedIn, connect it. When, when you start to see in many other areas of your life, this, this constant integration with other tools and other areas and other levels, and, and you look, then you start to think, what would be possible? Yeah. What could be possible? I remember when I started in the SAP space, you know, I sat down in the office. I didn't know what SAP was. They said, here, do this NetWeaver thing. I'm like, oh, okay. I looked at BSPs. I said, oh, I can relate to this. This is from my web developer background. I understand this. So this is cool. I can, I can sink my teeth into this. Serendipity, community was starting at SAP. I had people to ask the questions too. Where I started to see people take notice was I took a traditional ABAP report and I did a BSP page and I basically duplicated it. And we sat down in a, in a meeting. We had two projectors up. One was doing the ABAP load, report load and the other one was doing mine with the BSP. My BSP one was up and we were already filtering through all the data before the ABAP one had finished compiling. All the ABAPers in the company said, Oh, we need to look at that. Right. And I think what it is is we need to find, it's, call it the carrot, call it whatever you want. We need to find a way to communicate to them that they can still use the same technology that they're using. But now they can add a different level of value. Exactly. Yeah. Because Sorry to complete your sentence. No, no, you, you, you found the perfect phrase because all I did with the BSP was I took the exact same code from the ABOP side. And yeah. I used basically the same code because I didn't know ABAP at the time either. Right, 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 right. Right? So I was taking somebody else's and I was just basically tweaking it with the BSP stuff. And I added a value on top. Yeah. And that's what I think we need to focus on as a company is we need to start to help show the value on top. Okay. There was one thing that Bjorn said to me as we were walking out that I thought was really, really important. I said, you know, we've seen a lot of roadmap stuff and 150 apps connect and we're going open, yada, yada, yada. I said, I said, I know, you know, I said that that's not all available today, but not by a long way. And one thing I said, you know, how are you dealing with this? He said to me, he said, I can't talk about anything more than a few weeks out, maybe a month or two out. He said, if it's going to be six months out, I've got to say it's six months out. This world is moving far too fast for me to make those kinds of, the kinds of statements. That's interesting. SAP doesn't say that because it normally works on two, five, seven-year life cycles, time cycles, and we're all used to thinking, oh, yeah, they announced a Sapphire, see you in 2020 kind of thing, right? Yeah. And that's not happening now, right? How are developers adapting to that? Because this is a, a pace of change that they've never seen before, right? Um, You're smiling. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm smiling because I, I see this every day with the with the SAP community, right? right? I, I see the questions coming in. You know, I'm, I'm in there constantly reading, lurking, seeing how the, what the pulse is, and, and I see this. And, and to be honest with you, there's two buckets. There's those that are coping and coming along, and the, those, are, they're the, those who are literally pushing back and struggling. And it's not even an age or experience level thing. Mindset. It, it's, it's a mindset, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think what it is, 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 and you see this a lot, I don't have time to do that. Time management seems to affect every area of our lives. Oh, it does, But yeah. no more powerfully than with technology when new technology is coming. Do you know, it's interesting that you say that because I was talking to one of the guys running um, user experience. And they're under a huge amount of pressure. And they want to take time to make sure that they understand inside the customer what the hell's going on, which means researching. Yeah. Which means sitting down, not for a day, not for a week, but possibly a month or so. Yeah. To be really sure that whatever it is that they're thinking about is going to come to, come to fruition in a good way. Customers are pushing back and saying, I've got a month, I need, it in, I need it in two days. Well, you can't have it in two days, I'm sorry. And I think sometimes it's going to be hard love on both sides. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we're going to have to say... I'm sorry. No, can't do it. Yeah. This is, this is, if you want to write, this is what it is. Right. Right. Um, you know, I remember back to, I used to, when I worked in a cubicle and I was stuck in a cubicle in the U.S. in an office, I always had a sign, <laughs> plastic sign up that said, 
failure to plan on your part is not a, does not constitute an emergency on my part. Right, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and it, it's basically this concept of hard love. Yes, somebody may want it right now, but instead of asking the question of what do you want, I think we need to start asking the question of what do you actually want to accomplish with it, right? right? Because it may not be that you need that right now. It may be that you have a problem here that you think this is the solution, but maybe I have alternatives for you. And actually, that's a, a much more interesting question because it forces me to, into thinking, what is the one thing that really matters? Yeah. And and I can tell you from personal experience, it's getting harder and harder and harder to, to, to do that, to, to get to that point. I, I because think, there are so many priorities. Well, I think the problem is, though, is that the whole concept of a priority has shifted. It's changed. We don't have the same concept of a priority doesn't exist today than no. it did before. No. And and this is how I remind myself every day, right? right? One of the good friends of, 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 <laughs> of mine in, in Germany um, is a nurse. Okay. An emergency on her watch puts everything that I have to shame. Because people can die. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. And that makes me take a moment to step back and say, okay, you know what? <laughs> Is it really that important? Yeah, yeah. important? Yeah. Or can we have a conversation and figure out what are the actual points that we need to address? Okay. Okay. Right. Come on. We need to wrap this up. All right. What about next year? Where are you going to be next year? What's going to happen by this time next year? Come on. Put your prediction out on. Oh, gosh. Um, well, I do predict that I'm going to be doing a lot of the same very cool stuff. That's a no-brainer. Come on. I am, I am terrified that it might be a bigger space. <laughs> I have gotten my steps in every day, no problem. The space is that big. Um, but I do, what I do predict is that you will see a much bigger community presence, but not from a, hey, this is how the website works, or hey, this is, you know, this. You're going to see a pr bigger presence in terms of how people can engage and interact together. And hopefully a little bit more coherence from the community about what the heck's going on and where they need to be. Yep. Does that sound good? Um, that's my plan. That's what I'm going for. Thanks a lot, Greg.